I know from first-hand experience that the four letters, M-I-D-I, pronounced MIDI, can have some breakout into panic and confusion. As a guitarist, I spent several years convinced that MIDI was a complicated subject that only keyboard players need worry about. How wrong I was. Firstly, it's not complicated, and secondly, it's useful to just about any musician that uses electronic gear in their setup, including us guitarists with effects pedals. So let's have a brief introduction to what MIDI is all about. MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface, and the first thing to explain is MIDI is not audio. You can't hear it. It's simply a set of instructions that is understood by some musical equipment. It might be instructions to a synth on what notes to play, how hard to play them, how long to play them, etc., or instructions to an effects unit to tell it to change patches or change the delay time or some other parameter. It is a synth playing back those instructions that we hear. Within Sonar, we are mainly concerned with controlling instruments and synthesizers, but it can be used to store SysX data from effects units and other MIDI devices. SysX is short for System Exclusive and is a message format used by manufacturers to send non-standard messages. Patch settings for an effects processor, for example, can be sent as SysX messages. We will be concentrating on MIDI note data initially, and it's this data or set of instructions that a synth follows to create the notes that we hear. The synth turns MIDI data into audio. Let's look at this process in more detail. I'm going to explain the setup and routing of a typical MIDI synth, and I'm going to use TTS-1 for this for a number of reasons. First, it comes with all versions of Sona. Second, it's relatively simple both to use, and its interface isn't too confusing. Thirdly, it's GM or General MIDI compatible. That means it has a set of sounds included on set patch numbers conforming to the MIDI standard. Fourthly, it can use all 16 channels at once. Last but not least, it has multiple audio outputs, four in all. We'll also look at slightly more complex synths, as there are a few differences and options they may have, such as the assigned controls. So let's start with a blank template and drag TTS1 from the plugin browser into it. At the Insert Soth Synth dialog, we just make sure that the MIDI source and all synth outputs stereo is checked under the Create These Tracks section. And under the Open These Windows, the Synth Property page is checked. Then click OK. We're now looking at the TTS1 interface, where we can control which sounds, known as patches, are selected for each channel, how loud they're played back, and their pan position amongst other settings. Each vertical strip with the three knobs at the top and fader at the bottom represents a MIDI channel. Remember, a GM synth can use 16 channels at once, and that's what we see here. At the moment, all of the patch selectors are set to Piano 1, except for Channel 10, which is set to one of the GM drum kits. Channel 10 is traditionally used for drums, but there's no difference between that channel and any of the others. If we click on a patch name to the right of the fader, we can select a different patch or sound from those available. For now, we'll change the sound on Channel 2 to a fingered bass sound. We can also change these patches and other settings from within the MIDI track, and we'll see how to do that in a minute. Let's close the TTS1 interface and have a look at the routing involved to be able to play and hear the synth. I'm going to hide the browser now by pressing B and press F to fit all tracks. As we can see, Sona's created one MIDI track called Cakewalk TTS1 and four synth or instrument tracks. An instrument track is just an audio track that has its input assigned to a soft synth. Note that one important difference is it doesn't have a record button like an audio track does but has a waveform preview button instead. Clicking on this allows you to see the synth's audio output in visual form, similar to recorded track, but no permanent audio is stored. Each of these four synth tracks corresponds to one of the Cakewalk TTS-1 outputs. TTS-1 has four outputs available, some synths have more and some less. For now, I'm going to change the MIDI track's name to Piano and the first instrument track's name to Piano Audio as well. Now let's look at the MIDI track first. Make that the In Focus track and open the inspector. We're going to pay particular attention to begin with to the input and the output fields. Input, as you can see, is set to Omni, which means that any device that is attached and outputting MIDI data will be received by this track. Note that none is the same as Omni. If you have a keyboard controller, you can select the input from here. I have a PCR keyboard, and I'm going to select PCR on MIDI Omni option. 
This means all data on any channel output from my PCR keyboard will be received, but I could just as easily have chosen an individual channel. Now if you watch the meter to the right, you'll see that as I press keys on the keyboard, it indicates it's receiving data by the red indicator at the top of the meter, and a green indicator below indicates the velocity or how hard I'm playing the keys. You can also hear playback being generated by TTS-1. To be able to hear any input on this track, we need to make sure that the input echo button is lit, which it will be by default, unless you've changed the setting in the MIDI preferences that we looked at in the setup section. The output field indicates where that MIDI data being received here or being played back from a clip on the track is sent to. In this case, it's going to Cakewalk TTS-1. The channel field indicates the channel number that the data is being sent on. This is currently set to none. This of course should be a number from 1 to 16. I'll set this to 1. And the bank field indicates the bank in use. Or we can select a bank from here. I'll select the TTS1's first bank. The patch field indicates which patch is selected. And we can choose one from here. Unless these fields are changed, TTS1 will use the defaults. Changes made here will also be reflected within the TTS-1 interface. Not only patch changes, but any changes we make within the track. Changes to volume and pan, for example. Let's reduce the volume on this channel slightly. That explains where the MIDI data comes from, what bank and patch the data uses, which channel the data is sent on, and where the data is sent to. Now let's reopen TTS-1's interface and see what happens to this data once it's received there. To open the interface for any synth, Double click on the soft synth track icon of the track. Notice how the volume on channel 1 has been reduced slightly. It has responded to my moving the volume on the MIDI track assigned to it. As I press keys on my keyboard, we'll see the data being received in channel 1, which is generating a piano sound and outputting to one of its audio channels. The output meter to the right indicates this. The output channel by default will be output 1. We can change this within TTS-1 by clicking on the System button, and then the Option button. Here we can see all 16 channels output assignments, and while we're here, we'll change Channel 2 to Output 2, Channel 3 to Output 3, and Channel 10 to Output 4. We then close that window, close the System window, and finally close TTS-1. That makes sure that the data received on those channels is sent to the outputs we want to use. Now we're back at the track view, we'll click on the first output, and if we look at the input drop down on channel 1, we can see it's assigned to the first stereo output of the TTS-1. The inputs on the other three SOS synth tracks will be set to outputs 2, 3 and 4 respectively. The track outputs are set to my master bus. So let's recap this MIDI routing. Data is received on the MIDI track, either from a clip within that track, or as is in this case, from a device assigned to the track's input. The data is then sent to a soft synth on the channel we choose, where it is received and turned into audio. The audio is then sent to one of the synth's outputs that we choose, which is in turn assigned to an audio track, known as an instrument or synth track within Sonar. Here that audio can then be processed using effects and EQ if we wish, and then output to our master bus, which in turn outputs it to our audio outs, so that we can hear it. So that's the basic routing taken care of. Let's look at how we play more than one sound at once. To do that, we need to use more than one channel, and that means we need to insert more MIDI tracks. I'm going to select all of the tracks, and resize them while holding the Shift key down to make room for more. Right click on a blank area, and select Insert Multiple Tracks. I decrease the audio track count to zero, and increase the MIDI track count to 3. Set the MIDI output port to Cakewalk TTS-1. Leave the channel setting on None for now, and then click OK. We now have three more tracks added to our project, and pressing F again will fit them into view. I'm now going to rename the tracks. The first MIDI inserted track I'm going to name Bass, the second one Strings, and the third one Drums, and then I'm going to rename tracks 2, 3 and 4, to the audio names respectively. Now that's done, let's click on the base MIDI channel and change the channel number to channel 2. Remember we set the bank and patch names earlier, 
So that's already set, but isn't reflected in the channel yet. Next, click on the Strings MIDI track. And this time I'll set that to channel 3. The bank to preset normal 0. And select Strings from the patch list. Finally, I click on the MIDI Drums track. Set the channel to that. Remember the traditional channel for drums is channel 10. And select Preset Rhythm from the Bank field. And then I'm going to select Room Set from the patch list. Now if I reopen the TTS-1 interface by clicking on one of the icons again, we'll see that these changes are reflected within the TTS-1 interface. Channel 2 is on fingered bass, 3 is on strings, and channel 10 is now on room set. Just move the TTS-1 interface slightly. The inspector. Now as I change the in-focus MIDI track and play my PCR keyboard, the sound we hear will change according to the in-focus track. To hear more than one sound at once, we need to turn on the input echo button for the tracks we wish to hear. Notice that as I switch it on for the piano, bass, strings, the button changes to show that I'm overriding the auto through setting. Now when I play the keyboard, we'll hear all four sounds. Note from looking at the associated audio tracks audio meter, we can see each sound is coming through its own track. That is also reflected in TTS-1's interface. To stop one of the instruments from playing, all we need to do is make sure it's not the in-focus track and deselect its input echo button. For example, to stop the drums, we make sure that that's not the in-focus track, then turn off its input echo. Now when I play the keyboard, you won't hear the drums. Notice there's also no incoming MIDI on the drum track. We can also use the instrument tracks to control whether we hear the instrument or not. For example, if I mute the strings audio, we don't hear that. Of course, other audio processing such as EQ and other effects can be used on the audio tracks, and we'll be looking at that in later videos. I'm just going to click drag through the three MIDI tracks, hold down the control key, Turn off their input echo buttons. Now make the drum track the in-focus track. Now when I play the keyboard, it will be just drums. Hopefully, this will help your understanding of MIDI routing and related audio output from SOS synths. And we'll look at how we use this type of setup in more detail in the recording and mixing videos. Other synths will vary, as not all synths respond to multiple channels. You'll find more information on how a synth works and responds in its manual, or by pressing F1 with the synth interface open.